Guys, I'm Clint with ATS. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of testing up the gauntlet again. So we call it the gauntlet because it's a hell raising uh, 100 mile loop that takes us up the Rocky Mountains. So we're going to head out of here, out of Denver, head up by 70. We're going to put a fifth wheel behind the, the ram. We're going to add a, uh, another trailer behind that. So we're going to be, you know, that 30,000, 32,000 pound range, which is a uh, excellent load. So for those of you that haven't been in Colorado, I really encourage it, but I-70 is just brutal when it goes to going from elevation. We're gonna start at about 6,000 feet here, and we're gonna end up around 10,000 feet. And as that air gets thinner and thinner, you know, things get harder and harder on a vehicle. So when we come out of Denver, we're gonna go up a couple pretty aggressive hills. They're all 7% grades. They're anywhere from three to 15 mile grades, and it's a constant pull all the way up. So the Famous Eisenhower Tunnel is at the top of the last grade that we go up, and we're gonna end up right there at about 10,000 feet, and that'll be pretty much about a 15 mile um, uphill slope at 7% that just melts everything. Today what we're testing is our basically our Aurora turbocharger. So the Aurora turbocharger, we have it available in a stage one, a stage two, and a stage three, and then compounds. Today we're testing the stage three turbo. You know, in, in a series pass, we did all of our stock data, um, then we did our Stage 1 Turbo and our Stage 2 Turbo. Today the Stage 3 Turbo is the biggest single turbocharger that we developed that is a drop-in application that will get you what you're looking for without having to go to the additional um, hardware of compounds. What I'm so amped about the iDash is, is they've kind of done all the work for us. All the pins are there. In the past, we would add data recorders and I've used so many different data recorders. Now what we get with the iDash is it pulls all of the factory data and the newer vehicles, they have almost every data point, so we don't have to add external sensors. In a few cases, if we do have to add an external sensor, guess what, the iDash has the ability to add that on. We can add them on four at a time and it integrates it into that data. So once we record all that, we can look at any pressure, any temperature, literally anything we want. I mean, even in some cases, we're graphing transmission pressures, so we really know what's going on in transmission temperatures. So when you look at the entire vehicle, you have a full picture, and it gives you something that we just haven't been able to do in the past. So, you know, this thing, the iDash, has given us the ability to, to incorporate so many different tools. You know, a data recorder, a weather station, thing, you know, things that we can't pull off because we didn't have sensors, so we're writing them down. You know, this is all, all encompassed and now we can let it do all the work for us. So, it's, you know, it's, it's, a, it's really uh, just a dynamite piece for us. This is the little hill that gets a lot of people in trouble. This is right out of Denver, so we're headed out of Morrison. And this is a pretty aggressive grade. It's not a real long grade, but, you know, one of the things that really, really kills uh, vehicles is they they're already running hot, you know, running across the plains, and then you start cruising up out of uh, Denver into the hills, and this grade will just smoke so many vehicles. You know, we've seen so many tranny failures and blown up turbos from this hill that, you know, you get a uh, vehicle that's just compromised and, you know, on its last leg, just about to go away, and people are coming from the flats and start cruising up this thing and really don't pay attention to their hardware, and they just blow up. What we're looking for is the maximum amount of airflow through the engine. You know, we're not necessarily so concerned about the boost pressure. Um, obviously, boost pressure, you know, is part of the equation, but we want to have as much air density, you know, running through this engine as possible. Anyway, with the Stage 3, what we've done is we've opened up the turbine section so it has less back pressure. That means that we're going to expect a little bit less boost pressure. Um, from the turbo, but we will gain horsepower from it. You know, so what we're what we're really after is, you know, in a diesel for the most part, you want you want to kind of maximize what kind of efficiency, or let's let's make it really simple, what kind of boost we can get out of the turbo up to the point that we start to lose the efficiency. At that point, the game's kind of over. You know, it's all about the density, and and that's exactly what the i dash. I mean, it makes our job so much easier because. It gives us all so much of this information. It calculates it. I mean, it gives us manifold air density, right, right, like right on the right on the fly. Um, we can look at exhaust back pressure. You know, of course, we can look at boost. We can look at we can pretty much pull up any pit we want. Um, but the key factors is uh, looking for you know giving us the things that we want real time 
right now and then then we'll take this information and we can go back and we can start studying it, and then we can start changing the um, trim pro profiles potentially of what the turbine wheel would be um, where the veins are set so we use it not only to control what hard parts we put inside the turbo but also how it's programmed and, and it's obvious and it's and it's often a something we go back and forth I mean this is not the first time that we've you know done a uh, data test in the stage three I mean we've made this trip many 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 times um, with the stage three turbo and we're finally on our final designs as far as final tweaks and exactly what uh, well we've decided exactly what turbine wheel is optimized um, for this engine for this setup and I think we're pretty much dialed in to what the vein um, programming or optimization is. Alright, so it's pretty simple. Down arrow and lets you know and then cool thing about this it always has a little green light up top that's blinking so you know if you accidentally hit it or didn't hit it. There's never any question whether you're recording date or not. Now that just because we have the six lines on here doesn't mean that's all we're recording. It's recording everything in the background. We're just monitoring, we're just viewing the six data packets as it is, but everything in the back is recording, so that's being that's being recorded onto the to the um, SD card. So we're starting to do the downgrade now from the first hill. And, you know, this is a section of I-70 that, that just gets brutal every in, pretty much from Denver to to uh, Grand Junction. And you know, there's there's only a few places in America that you can really get to roads like this. C give you a good idea of where we're at. We are approaching the uh, Continental Divide. And the Continental Divide is basically the high point, you know, in the Colorado Rockies that divides the nation, essentially. All right, so now we've made the trip, we've, we've turned around, and if you think the bad section, or the last section was bad, this is, this is the killer, this is what we call the gauntlet. So something people don't realize, the Eisenhower Tunnel actually has two names. We're gonna go through the Johnson side this time. So as we're pulling up to the Eisenhower Tunnel, Hit the Johnson side, we're gonna make, I think it's about 11 miles of just upgrade. It just never, ever ends. And this is where we really get our durability testing and figure out if things are gonna really survive in the world or if we've gotta go back to the drawing board, so. All right, we're gonna start the data log and we're gonna roll out. Got a green light, we're good. So we're about halfway up the gauntlet. A couple of things I wanna point out. I don't know if you can see this data, but 1.5 psi is our back pressure in the in the DPF so we're running 16 pounds of boost 46 pounds of drive pressure in the manifold only one and a half pounds of back pressure in the exhaust which is a pretty low number considering I mean we're at like full power we're running about 1400 degrees EGT so we're, we're really pushing this thing and to give you an idea of the health of the motor 217 degrees um, engine coolant, 174 degrees transmission temperature. So we're pretty much like not even knocking on the on the door of stressing this motor out. Of course, we could put a lot more fuel in it. We could get get our um, power levels up, but this is a durability test. And if you look at our ratio now, one of the things that you might notice we have two gauges here. This is our air fuel ratio. We use this for real time. That's one thing currently the banks doesn't have to offer. So we've been running, before we would have a whole slew of gauges, right? We would have literally 15 gauges. Now that we've got the uh, iDash, we're down to two gauges and these guys were good enough to work with us on this. So this will be coming out soon in a new release. So now that bit of data will be inside the iDash and that's our air fuel ratio. So we made it to the top, that was a nice pull. We could literally flat foot this thing, wide open throttle, over 30,000 pounds, up a 7% grade for 15 minutes. Engine is like primo condition. So that's, re that's really what we're looking for, you know, in a towing combination. I mean, we were running up the pass at 60, 65 miles per hour, all the way up to the top, you know, pulling triples. So that's a, that's a very nice, reliable, good towing setup so I I think we have something that we're we're pretty close to the end game on this thing with this uh, nice little stage 3 turbo package in the tuning so again thanks to uh, banks for all the help with the uh, data makes us makes our life very very easy
and uh, quicker to get things to market. So, nice pull. So the coolest thing, this little SD card right here has all the data we need to really dial in our turbos. It's gonna give us everything we need to make them better.